In this question, we are supposed to find, we are supposed to identify the given statements either as assumptions or questions or reason or fact or conclusion or inductive in inference or proposition. So, in order to identify the given statement type, we are supposed to understand what these terms stand for and how they are different from each other. Right, now the first statement, let's look at the first statement. The first statement says, when you look at the people who make fundamental revolutionary breakthrough in any field, you keep noticing over and over again a high preponderance of them have some sort of disability when they were younger, whether it was a physical disability or mental disability which leads to lower expectations from others whom they always wanted to prove wrong. So, the, so why people excel in a particular field, those that bring about revolutionary, revolutionary breakthroughs is because according to this author of this, the author, the writer of this particular statement, the reason lies behind the, them having had some, some kind of physical disability or mental disability. Since first statement gives an opinion of the author, therefore it's an assumption. It's an assumption that the it, it, it's what the author thinks is the reason behind revolutionary breakthroughs, right? So clearly statement 1 is an assumption. This negates option C. This eliminates option C, D and E. Right, now, now we left with options A and B. Now the second statement in both the options is a, is a question. And what does it do? Uh, certainly it's a question. Uh, so this cannot give the reason why, uh, of choosing one over the other. Now the fourth statement according to option B is a reason and according to option A is a fact. Okay, let's read. So it's third is you increase your engagement in something because you want to fight against those expectations. So it seems like it actually can be a gift having what we label as a disability or disorder and cause people to overcompensate and engage in things in other ways. So as we can see third is also a reason and four is an extension of that reason. So clearly the answer to this question is option B. Fourth is therefore a reason and not a fact. Even seventh is a conclusion. Seven says and this overcompensation leads to greatness. So finally the statement concludes the argument throughout the passage and therefore the answer is option B. Uh, look at the following question. Here also we are supposed to differentiate the given statements, uh, based, uh, statements types whether they are we are supposed to identify if they are uh, facts, reasons, inductive inference or deductive inferences. Now let's look at the difference between deductive inference and inductive inference. Okay. According to the definitions given here, inductive inference is an end, finish or summarization reached for the whole based on a particular real incidence. That means inductive inference is based on the argument given or a real particular incident cited right now as it is in as, as, as it is evident from the name itself it is an inference that is induced that is a part of the argument given right deductive inference is one that you derived you reach at by combining or recombining two assumptions two assumptions two premises are given to you you combine and recombine the premises and reach deduce something deduce an inference out of it. So clearly as we can see from the definitions inductive inference is is in is an inference drawn from the given arguments whereas inductive and inductive inference is definite. In, inductive inference can be can also be an uncertain inference while deductive inference has to be definite. Now look at the question. The first statement says the fatal consequences of having a routine midday meal for at least 22 children in Bihar, Saharan district exp expose the chronic neglect of school education in a large part of India. Right. So, clearly from the given statement, the fatal consequences of having a routine midday meal for at least two 22 children 
in Bihar Saharan district expose something that means something has been deduced from this particular evidence what do they expose the chronic neglect of school education in the large part of India so clearly it's inductive inference right and it's not a fact it's not a reason definitely not a reason so this negates option a b and e right now from 1 and 2 1 says sec 2 is a fact whereas uh, sorry option c says 2 is a fact whereas option d says 2 is an inductive inference let's read the second statement it says the governments cannot find a small piece of land for a school and are unable to store food materials without the risk of contamination in a telling commentary on their commitment to is a telling commentary on the commitment to universal primary education so just like something exposed something about school education in statement 1 in statement 2 something is a telling commentary on something right so clearly it's also an example of inductive inference right something is some fact is given and you infer something out of it the fact is the government cannot find a small piece of land for a school and are unable to store food materials without the risk of contamination and what does what can we infer from it we can infer that we can infer that this is a telling commentary on their commitment to universal primary education that is the government is not committed to universal primary education right so clearly we induce something from something so therefore the answer to this question appears to be d let's see option 3 option 3 doesn't matter because uh, this we cannot differentiate between the two options on this basis because both of them are inductive inferences in both the cases so therefore the answer is option d question here is based on identifying the right part of speech now the first word is the mba so option a mentions what one is one is a noun 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 d and e do not mention this two is it the MBA is hardly a prerequisite for success but it certainly helps it here stands for the MBA MBA certainly helps it is definitely a pronoun right definitely a pronoun definitely a pronoun 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 all four are correct all three are correct nothing going wrong as of now it certainly helps it helps is a verb so therefore three here is definitely incorrect this eliminates option A three not mentioned in other options this is correct here this is also correct fourth word is and it has been getting more important in recent years so something has been getting more important so clearly this is an adjective this defines the quality of a noun of it it here is MBA it, it is becoming it is getting more important in recent years so fourth definitely is an adjective right right this is incorrect here this eliminates option D this is right okay now out of B C and E now neither of them mentions 5 let's check out 6 the sixth word is most MBA programs equip their graduates to understand how to deal with many of the important questions how here describes modifies to deal to deal which is a verb so definitely an infinitive so de definitely how is an adverb so this is correct this is correct here okay this we already eliminated so now let's look at the seventh option seven says most how to deal with many of the important questions and the organization will need to tackle over time will need to tackle so so to tackle here is definitely not an adverb this eliminates option B to tackle is this also eliminates option C to tackle is definitely a verb and therefore option C option E is correct let's check out eighth one eight says and and is definitely a conjunction over time and what they will face in their career so this renders option E correct hence the, the correct answer is option E uh, let's look at the given RC passage here 
the first paragraph of the passage begins by introducing the main idea which is it is one week since Uttarakhand's worst disaster in living memory that is Uttarakhand experienced the worst disaster and then goes about giving details of what really happened the consequences of the disaster the disaster happened the disaster was flash floods which resulted in intense rainfall flooding mountain sides villages towns and etc etc and the second paragraph goes about discussing something different which is a week later media attention where was it riveted where which wh what was it focused on that it is it, it's mainly focused on the efforts to rescue tens of thousands of pilgrims and tourists visiting the shrines in the uppermost reaches of Uttarakhand's sacred rivers whereas the deluge that is the flood spread beyond the char dhams to cover the entire state right now let's look at the question that follows it says which of the following would the author agree the most with so the option A says Char Dhams were most affected by Uttarakhand disaster. Clearly it's incorrect because all that the passage states is that Char Dhams were the most were the center of attraction, attention for the media and not that media media's attention was on Char Dhams because they were the most affected areas. Right. So option A can be eliminated. B says entire catchment of rivers flowing in Uttarakhand was affected. Option B is says entire catchment of rivers flowing in Uttarakhand was affected. So this talks about all the rivers whereas uh, the passage says the catchment of many smaller rivers also witnessed flash floods. From this we cannot say the entire catchment of rivers was affected. So clearly option B can be eliminated. C says media attention was on Char Dham, but this is true, part of the statement is true, but the entire catchment area of rivers, this is talking about the area, entire catchment area of rivers flowing in Uttar Uttarakhand was affected. Now since the author says that uh, the flood covered the entire state, from this we can infer that the entire catchment area of rivers flowing in Uttarakhand was affected, so option C is correct. D says media cannot be trusted as it focuses only on important places and events we cannot say that media cannot be trusted because it gives only part of the relevant information so therefore this is incorrect E says voluntary organizations are better than media in reaching out to the affected people the passage makes no reference to voluntary organizations so E can be eliminated hence the answer to this question is option C uh, look at the question here we here uh, based on phrase replacement uh, the statement says Patna is not only the capital of Bihar but it's also one of the oldest cities in the world and the largest city in the state now it is also one of the oldest cities oldest here is the correct use of the adjective uh, it means that uh, of all the cities in the world it's the oldest it's therefore uh, the correct uh, adjective required here should be superlative and not comparative this eliminates options C, D and E which use the comparative form of the adjective which is older. Comparative forms of adjectives are used to compare two nouns or pronouns, two objects or subjects but not, but does not state that one is the best of all or the oldest of all, oh, sorry, one, one is the oldest of all. Right, so now of options A and B. B uses the conjunction nevertheless whereas A uses the conjunction but also but also here makes sense because the statement should be that Patna is not only the capital of Bihar not only is this quali this this is the description of this is this is uh, this is the description of Patna that it is the capital of Bihar but that another description of Patna is that it is one of the oldest cities in the world and the largest city in the states so both of them moving in the both parts of the statement moving in the same direction talking about how relevant Patna as a city is it's a capital of Bihar and at the same time the oldest cities in the world city in the one of the oldest cities in the world and the largest city in the state right so therefore not only and but also is the correct combination of uh, conjunctions which stands for and which is synonymous to and now option B uses the word nevertheless where nevertheless refers to 
is used to join statements that are different in direction for example he, if i say that he has a negative quality whereas this is something positive about him then i can use an, a, a conjunction neg uh, nevertheless to combine the two so i can say he's although he is he is he is stupid he, he nevertheless rich so therefore option b can be eliminated and the correct answer is therefore option a this question on para jumble should begin with statement which introduces electroweak symmetry breaking this concept and that how it uh, how it is important in particle physics uh, one should be followed by three because it talks about how standard electroweak model is three should be followed by four because four discusses how supersymmetry is a better theoretical has a better theoretical basis than the standard electroweak model five should be followed by uh, four should be followed by five because it uses the abbreviation suzy and discusses what makes susy that is supersymmetry better than uh, better than standard electroweak model and two should follow five because they here in two refers to the two chiral superfields discussed in five. So therefore, the correct answer to this question is option A. Uh, this para jumble should begin with sentence one should be followed by four because four discusses an example of a connection of one of his sonnets appearing after uh, his death that is in 1609 and four should be followed by five that presents a contrasting situation of uh, that is many individual plays appeared during his lifetime in unauthorized editions known as quartos and five should definitely be followed by three because five and three form a mandatory pair because three discusses uh, discusses more about these quartos that is these quartos are unreliable many of these quartos are unreliable why are they unreliable is the reason given in two so three and two also form a mandatory pair Two says the reason why these quartos are unreliable is because some of them were probably based on author's memories of the plays. This makes option E 14532 the correct answer. Uh, let's read the given sentence here and try to conjecture which of the uh, which in, in this context which words should fill the blanks given in the statement uh, to understand its context. The statement says the defense proposes to show that the incident that the prosecution so dash rejects as dash did indeed take place. The statement suggests that uh, the incident did indeed take place whereas according to the context of the passage the statement says that the prosecution however committed a mistake by rejecting it as something that is that did not really happen as something that was fake, th uh, as something that was fictitious while actually the, the truth was that the incident did take place. So prosecution thought that, uh, prosecution claimed that the incident did not take place. They rejected it as something fictitious whereas the incident did take place. So the blank should be filled with something that is synonymous to fake, right? And the, this blank here should be either filled by something that is forceful because the prosecution uh, could have forcefully put their point put their opinion forward or vehemently or uh, authoritatively so uh, in this context the only answer the only words that fit in appropriately are option b cavalierly and apocryphal cavalierly means authoritatively and apocryphal means fictitious so option b is the answer option a blithely happily rejected as undesirable is incorrect vehemently factual if the incident if the prosecution says that the incident was factual then it did in uh, that then it's not in contrast with the idea that the incident actually did take place it is in the same line whereas we require a contrast here because the defense and the prosecution are not on the same side persuasively pointless prosecution so persuasively rejects as pointless did in indeed take place an incident cannot be pointless S option d e says convincingly is inevitable did indeed take place so if the incident was inevitable then there is 
uh, then it's the same as saying that then then the incident is bound to happen so clearly again then the defense and the prosecution are saying, saying the same thing therefore all the other options a c d and e can be rejected and option b is the answer now let's look at the sentence given here it says not only the absence of dash but also the presence of dash and dash is required to bind up the nation's wound the first paragraph should be filled with a negative word whereas the second para the sorry the first blank should be filled with a negative word and the second blank should be filled with a positive word that pairs well with the word honesty uh, so therefore options b c and d can be eliminated because religion and austerity do, do not pair well with honesty now out of options a and e option e seems to be a better fit because uh, since we're talking about a serious uh, thing which is binding up the nation's wound and also because honesty goes well more with understanding than com com camaraderie or friendship therefore option e is the correct answer the given paragraph states that in many cases in physics one has to deal simultaneously with collective and single particle excitations in a system and then the paragraph goes about differentiating between collective excitations and uh, single particle excitations describing collective excitations at, as bosonic and partic single particle excitations as fermionic so now the last sentence of the paragraph states that therefore we have to consider a system which includes both bosons and fermions that is that includes both collective excitations and single particle excitations so clearly the passage talks about two systems and those two systems deal are supposed to be dealt simultaneously in many cases in physics so therefore since this is a conclusive conjunction uh, therefore, the final statement here, the blank, should be talking about both collective excitations and single particle excitations and at the same time should be talking about both in terms of their being dealt together. Okay, So, this is the reason that we negate option C because option C deals with, deals with both the excitations but then separately is the word that is incorrect because the paragraph talks about the two kinds of systems being dealt simultaneously this also negates eliminates option e that states that the two kinds of excitations cannot exist together therefore option e can be eliminated a says a is limited because it only talks about bosnic particles whereas the last statement evident from the word hence should be dealing with both kind of particles so there this eliminates option a option d is incorrect because uh, because it, it it just reiterates a fact that is already given in the passage and does not give us any other further information so d also can be eliminated option b is the correct answer because it says that in this book Hence, in this book, we discuss application of general algebraic theory of mixed Bose-Fermi systems to atomic nuclei. So, this question, this option deals with both Bose and Fermi system together and how they form an algebraic theory to f atomic nuclei. Right. So, this is the correct answer. Okay, let's read the given close passage here. Peter has suggested to me that the dash of highly systematic and dash planning techniques may have led to a substantial dash in the firm's notion of what is likely to happen in the future and thus to a dash in the incidence of mistakes, especially on the part of the dash modern corporations. Okay, let's look at the options here. Progressive development for the first blank or progressive deterioration or gradual growth. Now options that contain progressive development or gradual growth, one and the same thing. Uh, progressive deterioration is different so l the second blank can take the word exact or precise let's see what what fits into this given blank the third sentence the third blank options given here for the third blank are decline increase improvement 
and for the fourth blank the given options are contain decrease reduction decline for the fifth blank the words are tiny large okay let's see let's look at the passage again and try to figure out if, if option b fits in because this is completely different it says progressive deterioration peter has suggested to me that the dash of highly systematic and dash planning techniques may have led to a substantial dash in the firm's notion of what is likely to happen in the future option b says a progressive deterioration of exact planning techniques may have led to a substantial increase in the firm's notion of what is likely to happen in future this does not go with increase progressive deterioration does not go with inc with, with increase if planning techniques deteriorate then firms notions of what is likely to happen in future will not increase in in any case increase is as a word in this blank is incorrect <coughs> so option b can be eliminated now for the second blank should the word be exact or precise planning techniques have to be precise precise fits in better rather than exact because planning is something that happens in the beginning and is more or less precise not exact so therefore this makes sense this makes more sense the word precise now for the third blank may have led to substantial increase if if highly systematic and precise planning techniques undergo a progressive development then it is likely to increase the firm's notion of what is likely to happen in future it, it is likely to improve the firm's notion of what is likely to happen in future and not increase or decline for it it is going to improve or decrease decrease is also incorrect for this blank so substantial improvement in the firm's notion of what is likely to happen this eliminates options a d and e right let's look at the other blanks and try to fit in the words here and thus to a dash and thus to a reduction in the incidence of mistakes yeah if if we get to know that uh, what is likely to happen in future it will definitely it is definitely going to reduce it is likely to reduce uh, the incidence of mistakes especially on the part of the tiny or large modern corporations here it says large which does make sense so therefore option c is the correct answer here let's read the given close passage here clinical practitioners dash integrated mindfulness dash treatment of dash host of emotional and behavioral disorders dash borderline personality disorder major dis depression chronic pain or eating disorders number of such practitioners dash increased substantially now for the first blank the words were and could are inappropriate which eliminates options c and e it's because clinical practitioners someone can have mindfulness and not someone someone is not is not is mindfulness someone could someone cannot mindfulness that's that's incorrect usage of the words so here clinical practitioners have integrated mindfulness for treatment of or in the treatment of the correct pre preposition to be used is, is one can have mindfulness in the treatment of a host of emotional and di behavioral disorders this eliminates option d because for here is incorrect you cannot have mindfulness for something mindfulness in the treatment of a host of emotional and behavioral disorders because we are talking about a number of so therefore the word the correct preposition here is a and not the this renders option b also incorrect now let's look at the other words and if they fit into the other blanks a host of emotional and behavioral disorders such as such as would be like so it's a, it, it fits in the blank perfectly such as borderline personality disorders major depression chronic pain or eating disorders number of such practitioners has number of such practitioners has increased substantially so the number of such practitioners has definitely increased so this also makes sense here so the correct answer is option a
The closed passage given here is as follows. Ontology is a dash equated with taxonomic hierarchies of classes, class definitions and dash subsumption relation. Dash ontologies need not be limited to dash forms. Now the given options here often and frequently both, both fit into the first blank. Ontologies are often equated with or frequently equated with taxonomic hierarchies of classes, class defi definitions and dash subsumption relation. Now here the blank sh contains should should be taking either an article a or the now since uh, uh, taxonomic hierarchies of classes and class definitions are both specific uh, nouns therefore uh, the fits into the blank into the second blank which eliminates options a c and d now of options b and e the third blank is dash ontologies need not be limited to dash forms. Yet ontologies need not be limited to such forms, such forms correct. But ontologies need not be limited to these forms. Now here, these is also correct. In the second blank, should we have a yet or a but? Yet ontologies, where is yet? Yet means despite that, in spite of that. Here we do not require yet in this particular context. Therefore, this eliminates option B. But we require a but to suggest a shift in the change of the argument. Therefore, option E is the correct answer. The given passage here states that the objects of our desire have nothing to do with the value of the objects, but rather they are dependent upon the culture. The author moves on to state what state on what factors is desired the desire nurtured. Uh, it is dependent upon two factors: the consumer individually and consumer jointly. First of all, uh, it depends upon uh, individual fantasies of the consumers, where the person feels a imagines that he has a strong desire almost always actively stimulated by by attending seeking out entertaining and embellishing such images images produced by advertisements and uh, uh, and then secondly it is dependent upon the social nature of the desire the more a product becomes popular amongst the consumer the more uh, it consumers the more it makes a consumer buy that product so clearly as the last line states what makes consumer desire attached to a particular object is not so much the object's particular characteristics as the consumer's own hopes for an altered state of being involving an altered set of social relationships okay so this is the note on which the passage ends the first question states it says it gives you a statement and in the context of the statement and the passage, you are supposed to answer which of the given options conquer with the idea ideas in the two uh, places. One is in the statement and the other is the passage. So <coughs> the statement is the failure of men to transition from being shoppers and consumers to producers and creators has implications about his manly. The passage states that uh, what propels a man to desire an object is the dream of an altered state of being. Now here in this statement, the, the statement says that uh, man is unable to transform from uh, an image of being a shopper and consumer to producers and creators. So clearly it speaks something about his manliness. Now we do not know what this statement, how this statement refers to man's manliness because the passage makes no reference to it. All that this statement says is that man is unable to transform from a shopper to a consumer, uh, from a consumer to a producer. Now, option D conquers with both the ideas that whatever fulfills the desire of the man, whether to be a consumer or a producer will sell more which also conquers with the main idea because if an if man desires an altered state of whatever man desires that is an altered according to him an altered state of being he will um, 
he will go for it and he will and as a result will consume it more so therefore option d is the answer option a talks about manliness which the passage has nothing to do with so therefore option a can be eliminated options b and c are irrelevant because they cannot be inferred from this given statement or the passage for that matter that men will consume whether men will consume more or they will produce and create more also option c is in contrast with the given statement because if men fail to transition from the role of being consumers to producers then they will they will not always create and produce this also option e would like to buy more do it yourself kids this is also this also can be eliminated on the same grounds therefore the answer to this question is option d now let's look at the next question this given statement here says men use the plasticity of consumer identity construction to forge atavistic masculine identities based upon an imagined life of self reliant pre modern men who lived outside the confines of cities families and work bureaucracies okay the statement suggests that uh, consumer identity construction is what determines that is what uh, men use to create identities that uh, that were associated with man manhood or masculinity in the past that is based that is a life an imagined life of self reliance pre modern men who lived outside the confines of cities by pre modern men outside the confines of cities families and work bureaucracy so this is how men used to remain in the past in the pre modern era that is they lived in a self reliant imagined life also the passage states that uh, the consumers desire for the object depends uh, upon the society in which he lives that is other consumers and the culture other than his individual uh, Im imagination and uh, and option d is in sync with both the ideas which says that consumer will satisfy their desire of masculine identity through socially visible consumption therefore the answer to this question is option d option a talks about anti social behavior uh, which the passage has got nothing to do with passage makes no reference to it now option e has nothing to do with masculinity doesn't talk about masculinity at all and therefore has nothing to do with this given statement here and therefore can be eliminated hence the answer is option d uh, the given statement here suggests that uh, personalized fashion statement that people make personalized fashion statements by resisting dominant fashion norms or consumer culture at large and option d is in sync with this idea and therefore is the correct answer options a and c talk about females which the passage does not specify and therefore can be eliminated option b talks about resisting all dominant norms which the statement does not state this given statement does not state so option b is extreme and therefore is incorrect option e talks about attractiveness which the passage makes no reference to and hence the answer to this question is option the given passage states that despite the fact that probability plays a satisfact uh, despite the fact that probability plays a decisive part in modern physics we still lack a satis satisfactory axiomatic system for the calculus of probability that means we are still not able to calculate probability cert with certainty the author further says that probability statements play such a vitally important role in empirical science but still they turn out to be in principle impervious to strict falsification in other words it is difficult to falsify probability statements without or before experience so for that matter the author aims to do two tasks the first is to provide a fo new foundation for the calculus of probability by developing a theory of probability as a frequency theory along the lines of richard von miss misses and uh, the second task that he plans to undertake is to elucidate the relationship between probability and experience uh, to dispel any certainty that surrounds 
the d uh, calculation of probability. Now let's look at the first question that follows this passage. It says, the statement relations between probability and experience are still in need of clarification. What does it imply? The, the, the passage states that uh, prob probability and the relations between probability and experience is in need of clarification because uh, probability cannot be falsified uh, before, uh, you know, uh, before experience or without experience which is given in option uh, D and hence option D is the correct answer. Option A says probability of an event can always be checked with experience. This always renders this option incorrect. Option B says probability of an event can only be gauged historically completely out of context is mathematical probability is mathematical while experience is real this is also unrelated e says probability is futuristic this has got nothing to do with experience and hence the answer to this question is option d the next question says author has talked about two tasks in the above passage choose the best option from the following statements relevant to this tasks so what does what does the author say here the author says that uh, in order to in order to find out what it is worth we are confronted with two tasks that mean he will he will undertake two tasks to dispel all kinds of uncertainty that surrounds the uh, probability so that probabilities can be used by physicists without there being anything probable about probability right now option a says the first task is sufficient this is incorrect both the tasks are equally uh, important and both of them are required to be done and therefore option E is the answer both the tasks would be important for the author to test his theory all other options are limited the second option B option B says the second task is sufficient this is also incorrect either of the tasks is sufficient incorrect none of the tasks is sufficient incorrect so the answer to this question is option E 19 says which one of the following statements can be inferred from the passage uh, this question states which one of the following statements can be inferred from the passage option a says physics is the only subject that borrows from the theory of probability is the only subject that borrows from the theory of probability is incorrect why because the passage states that probability plays a decisive part in modern physics not that physics is the only subject that borrows from probability this renders option a incorrect b says physics is the only subject where the theory of probability is inaccurately applied this is also incorrect because the passage states that uh, here take a look uh, physicists make much use of probabilities without being able to say consistently what they mean by probability which proves option C here which says the theory of probability may be inaccurately applied in other subjects option D says physics is highly mathematical uh, it is incorrect because the passage says that physics uses probability but we cannot from this say that it's highly mathematical experience relates to physical objects only this is absolutely incorrect and therefore can be eliminated so the correct answer he here is option C uh, the author begins by stating that the government is that that government is best which governs the least or does not govern at all further on he states further uh, that uh, a standing government is as that, uh, that a standing government is as useless as a standing army because a standing government is only a mode which the people have chosen to execute through which the people have chosen to execute their will and it is equally liable to be abused and perverted before the people can act through it further he says that the practical reason why the majority rules is because is not is because uh, because it is physically the strongest uh, and then he moves on to say that uh, that he wishes that if, if he just wishes if there was a possibility that majorities do not decide what is right and or wrong but it is but the conscience and finally ends by saying that it is the uh, con that uh, uh, that it is the conscience of men uh, that it is a corporation of conscientious men which is in corp which is a corporation with a conscience which is in corporation with a conscience 
and that people should be men first and subjects afterwards now look at the first question it asks according to the pass author of the paragraph army is as we can see in the first paragraph itself he compares the standing government to a standing army and he says that both of them are useless and therefore the answer to this question is is not required now the second question says in general what would when would the government of majority be good for minorities when it is conscientious it is ref it is given here which uh, in the second paragraph which says that uh, can there not be a government in which the majorities do not virtually decide right or wrong but conscious so a con conscientious men con uh, are w those that work with their conscience and therefore the answer to this question is option d the next question is which of the following statements would the author agree with agree the most with Uh, the answer to this question is option A, which says men are bigger than the governments. So, which is which we can infer from this statement here. He says that we should be men first and subjects afterwards, and that respect for law uh, is is not desirable. But it is it should but one should respect right. So, therefore, the answer to this question is option A. The passage makes no reference to business houses, so option B can be negated. governments and armies are not required he says this only in order to prove that men are bigger than governments so therefore option c uh, we can uh, we we can choose option a over c option d says concepts of concept of nations is redundant this is also in this is incorrect the author makes no reference to concept of nations democracy is best for citizens this is against the argument of the passage which does not support majority rule so the answer to this question is option the author in this rc passage states that it is the rational mind of the cus customers that tries to justify the dis uh, the discrepancy in the prices of psycho physically identical goods that means goods that have the same sensory perception and that justification is uh, that people associate the quality of the psycho physically identical goods with the uh, advertising uh, that with the effort that the company takes in advertising its products so the author says that this is completely bizarre this is rather irrational than rational why he explains this concept that you know rutherford he came up with the uh, rutherford's theory uh, he although studied by moderately bright physicists has no effect on the mechanics of gases so therefore we should not be comparing two things that really need not be compared we should not be mixing matters so uh, that's that's where the author concludes now let's look at the question that follows the question says which of the following statement would be the closest to the argument in the passage uh individuals are more rational than firms firms are rational firms are more rational than individuals firms are most of the times more rational than individuals this is the correct answer option d firms are most of the times more rational than individuals answer to this given this question is given in the parenthesis in the first paragraph it states that no doubt the fact that most beer is brought by individuals rather than as raw material by firms which could be expected to be more rational than individuals so firms could be expected to be more rational than individuals is part of the explanation now firms are more rational than individual is very definitive whereas the the passage is talking about firms being expected to be more rational than individuals the market behavior of psycho psychophysical goods would be the same as that of physical goods this is not given in the passage and therefore option e can be eliminated now the answer to this question is therefore option d the next question is why has the author referred to rutherford in the passage as we have seen that he draws this analogy of rutherford rutherford's experiment with uh, having no effect on the mechanics of gases to suggest that similarly uh, the quality of psychophysical goods is has nothing to do with the effort taken by the company or the money spent by the company on advertising its products so therefore the answer to this question is option b to highlight that we should not compare apples and oranges and therefore the answer to this question is option b the next question is which of the following as per the author are psychophysical goods 
as we've already discussed psychophysical goods are those that have the same that are made up of the same content that have the same effect on the senses of a person now since concrete car and mobile phones are all those kinds of products that can have various varieties and forms therefore they cannot be categorized under the uh, name of psychophysical goods therefore none of these is uh, an example of psychophysical goods so the answer to this question is option in the given RC passage, the author talks about the relationship between work and money. He says that one should work for the love of it and not for money. According to him, it is it would be economy for a town to pay its laborers so well that they would not feel that they were working for f low ends as for livelihood merely but for scientific or even moral ends. So he compares working a uh, love for work as a moral duty do not hire a man who does his work for money but him who does it for the love of it right and then he says he calls such a man as a wise man who loves his work and such a man he says can never be bribed by any community by any by any means he says that uh, he had heard that gold is malleable but it should not be but but sh it should not be so malleable it should not be so flexible that it even makes your wisdom flexible such that you uh, lose your uh, wisdom a grain of gold will jilt a great surface but not so much as a grain of wisdom so gold can jilt a great surface but not once but should not be capable of uh, jilting one's wisdom right now the question that follows is which of the following would the author disagree most with now since the author is against working only for the sole reason of earning money therefore the answer to this question is betting in a casino which is done only for the purpose of earning money now all other options can uh, refer to activities that can be done for the love of it right now the next question is which of the following could be a good title for the above passage now since the passage talks about the relationship between money and work and how it is and how it should be it, may, it renders option a correct option b D and E talk about God that author has made no reference to work is worship again worshipping is not dealt with he says that we should be loving the work we do right the next question is the author of the passage went on to say we are provincial because we do not find at home our standards because we do not worship truth but the reflection of truth because we are warped and narrowed by an extens exclusive devotion to trade and commerce and manufactures and agriculture and the like which are but means and not the end which of the following as per the author could have been the end now the end of all our pursuits as the author discussed cannot be money so this renders option a d this is power and e which is incorrect again because they talk about wealth earning of wealth and power economic growth which the author is not in favor of now since author is also not talking about happiness of fa family life therefore option c can also be eliminated the best possible answer here could be option b that one should work for the love of the work would lead to realization of the self and therefore option b is the correct answer